What's up everybody? Welcome, my name is Josh and I'm an intern here at The Grove. Uh, and we, I get the privilege today of walking us through and fin finishing our series on Daniel. For the past few weeks, we've been spending time through the book of Daniel, looking at different stories and uh, seeing the faithfulness of Daniel. And just a few weeks ago, Clay talked about the faithfulness of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, and seeing some of the similarities throughout all the passages. Today, I'll be talking about a pretty well-known uh, Bible story, which is the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Um, it's found in Daniel 6. And what we're going to be specifically looking at is how Daniel, even in the midst of craziness and madness in his life, he was still faithful to God and knew that he needed to follow the Lord and what he had called him to do before he bowed out and just dipped. So today we're going to be opening up Daniel 6 and where we're at in the story is Daniel had just interpreted some writing on the wall that the king had had appear in his temple. And the king had asked people all over his kingdom to come and interpret this writing on the wall, but nobody else was able to do it except for Daniel. Um, and since Daniel was able to, to interpret it, he got a pretty sick gig. He was able to get a, a, jo a boost in his job, and he was able to be made a higher up in the kingdom. Um, and this is where we're picking up. In Daniel 6.3, it says, Then Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials and satraps, who are local government officials, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. So not only was Daniel now given a promotion to be a higher up in the kingdom, he was asked to be the higher up of the higher ups. He was the one overseeing the other two people that were overseeing all these different local government officials, pretty much making him the king's right-hand man. Um, and why? Well, it's clearly stated. It says because he had an excellent spirit in him. His faithfulness was seen by the king, and it may, gave him a better job opportunity in his professional life. This leads to our first point, which is that your faithfulness to God should be public. Daniel was faithful, faithful to God in such an open way that things start, doors started opening up in his life that he wouldn't have opened up if he wasn't faithful to the Lord. Um, he wasn't worried about how other people judged him or how other people viewed him because of his faithfulness to God, but instead he was just worried about how he could be faithful to God in his everyday life. Um, now, I don't know what you guys are passionate about, but we're all passionate about something, whether it's sports, whether it's relationships with other people, relationships with family, maybe it's school. I don't know what that is for you, but we all find ourselves being passionate about something. Um, and that thing tends to overtake our life, whether it's something that we talk about a lot, something we dedicate a lot of time to. We just really spend a, we spend a lot of time with something that we are very, very passionate about. And people on the outside, they're able to see this thing that you're passionate about. So for example, sports. If you are a basketball player and you love watching the sport, um, I'm sure that you take time out of your day to go to practice. You take time out of practice and your day to go practice a little bit more just to get better than the people that you're competing against. Maybe you watch some film of other players and watch their moves and see how they implement different kind of moves into their, and you see how you can implement that move into your own game. Um, but you take time and you study it and you dive deep into it and the people around you they see this right they don't only see you going like being like no I can't hang out today I gotta go dedicate time to my craft uh, they hear you talk about it I'm sure if I was able to ask some of your friends what you're passionate about they'd be able to tell me some the thing that you're thinking of in your head right now why well because you spend so much time talking about it and caring about it and inviting them in the same idea should be brought to our relationship with God, where we are so passionate <laughs> and so faithful to Him that it's something that we participate in daily, um, where we invite our friends and say, hey, I want to read this passage with you, or hey, I want to uh, pray with you today, or walk through a book. I don't know what it is for you, but you invite your friends into your faithfulness to God so that they see the way that you live your life, and they're like, I want that too. Um, so in my own life, I found myself to be very passionate, not only about my relationship with God, but also my relationships with other people. I dedicate a lot of time to spending time with my friends and um, just whether we're playing games or just hanging out. I don't know what it is, but I just enjoy my community time. 
And at times, that my friendships with other people takes precedence over my relationship with God, and that's to my own fault. But instead of allowing that to happen, what I should be doing is prioritizing my relationships with my friends and saying, hey, I want to do this with you. And that thing could be like reading your Bible, praying, going to a worship night, um, whatever it is, just being in the Word with them and following the Lord with them. That way I can combine the two. But that way also my faithfulness is first and foremost to God and not first and foremost to my friends. And for you, it could be your faithfulness is to God first and foremost before your, your sport or before your academics or before your relationships. Uh, your faithfulness to God should be something that can be seen by people around you and that they know it's a part of who you are. So in Daniel's life, people saw his faithfulness and his faithfulness was so public that it gave him a great job opportunity in the kingdom. And moving on in the story, what we see is these high officials and these satraps who were the local government officials, they became jealous of Daniel's opportunity. They saw that he was a kid who didn't really deserve the opportunity that he was given, and they wanted to ruin Daniel's life because of it. They came together and tried to figure out a way that they could kind of harm him, but they realized there's nothing they could do because he was completely blameless. But what they did discover is that if they were to ruin Daniel's life, it needed to be in connection to the law of his God. So they went to the king later on, and they said, Hey, king, uh, we believe that you should make a petition for anyone to, for everyone in your kingdom so that they would not be able to pray to their God or any other God except for the king for 30 days. So it was a 30-day period. Um, and the king was like, okay, yeah, I'll sign that. And he signed the paper. And later that day, we find Daniel, and uh, he's, he knows that the law, that this decree, this petition has been signed, and he ignores it. In verses 10 and 11, it says, when Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went into his house where he had windows in the upper chamber open towards Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he had done previously. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and plea before their God. So Daniel, knowing the circumstances of his situation, knowing that if he prayed to God, he would be harmed. Uh, he would, in this instance, he would be thrown into a lion's den. Anybody who did not follow this uh, petition would be cast into a lion's den to die. He knew the situation, but his faithfulness to God was more important than the risk at hand. And this leads to our second point, which is that your faithfulness to God should be private. Um, Dave, Daniel spent three times a day in prayer with God. And it wasn't for show. It wasn't so that people would look at him and be like, you're such a godly man. No, that wasn't why. He did it because he just cared about his relationship with God so much. And he didn't care about what was going on around his life. He just knew that he needed to spend his alone time with God. Even us today, we've been called as Christians to take time out of our day and spend, spend it in prayer and in reading and in worship to God. It says in Matthew 6.6, 6, Jesus is found telling his disciples, and he says, But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. It's vital that, that we as believers, we take time out of our day to go be with God the Father. Because if you're not taking time out of your day to just be with you and the Father, then you're not growing your relationship with God. It's like any other friendship you have, right? When you want to be with your friends or you want to be with like one of your friends or if you're in a dating relationship and you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, you want to spend alone time with them. You want to be with each other one-on-one. -on -one. That's the same kind of relationship that God wants with us. He wants us to spend one-on-one -on -one time with him so that we can grow in our own personal relationships with him. Not for clout, not for people to see us as people who are pursuing like a great Christian people. It's just so that our relationship will grow stronger. Um, in Daniel's story, he did this continually throughout, his, throughout the book of Daniel. He always was giving time. Like it says, three, day, three times a day, he was praying, talking to God in regular conversation with him. Um, now, even though Daniel didn't care about what was going to happen to him, uh, 
he still had to be he still had to be punished for for not praying to the ki- not praying to just the king alone in those 30 days so when after the, he had got, gotten caught praying to god those high officials and those satraps went and they they ratted on him they told on him to the king and they said look at daniel he went and he prayed to his god and the king was so upset that daniel had been the one that was praying to god not because he was mad at daniel but he was upset that they had found him that for the entire night leading up to the next day he was wrestling with the fact that Daniel had done this and he didn't want to throw him into the lion's den. He was trying to come up with different ideas on how he could save Daniel from a tragic death. But ultimately, since it was now an executive order that Daniel needed to be thrown into the lion's den for disobeying the petition, the king summoned for Daniel to, be, to come to the palace and then to be thrown into the, the lion's den. But before Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, what we see the king say to him is this, may your God whom you serve continually, deliver you. Now, after this, the king went back to his palace, and he spent the next night sleepless. He was wrestling with the fact that he had just sent Daniel into the lion's den. Um, And the very next day at morning, he rushed to the lion's den, expecting to see Daniel just completely mauled by these lions. But something interesting occurred. Um, When he came to the den, he saw that Daniel was alive and well, not a scratch was on his body. Um, It says in verse 21, Daniel says to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut their lion's mouths, and they have not harmed me because I was found blameless before him. And also before you, O king, I have done no harm. Because of his faithfulness, both in public and in private, he was saved from a tragic death for, um, to, the, to, the tooth, to the teeth of lions. Um, the lions, ultimately what the king did is he's like, okay, well, I want Daniel out of there. And he summoned for Daniel to get out of the lion's den. And in his place, he threw the high officials and the satraps in there with their families. And before their bodies even hit the ground, they, their, every single one of their bones were broken. These lions were vicious towards the high officials, but they were not vicious towards Daniel because of Daniel's faithfulness. Uh, Now, this resulted in the king making a decree for all the people in his kingdom. The faithfulness of Daniel pushed the king to say these words to his people. In verses 26 and 27, it says, I make a decree that in all my royal dominion, people are to tremble in fear before the God Daniel, for he is the living God, enduring forever His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall be to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the powers of the lions. Daniel's faithfulness to God resulted in fruitfulness for his kingdom. And that leads us to our final point, which is that your faithfulness to God should result in fruitfulness for God in his kingdom. When we take a step back and we look at the entire story of Daniel 6, we see Daniel being faithful to God. And we see that he didn't, wasn't worried about what would happen to him, but instead he put, forth, he put in front of him his faithfulness to God. He did it through prayer. He did it through continually giving glory and honor to God for things that he had done. We see it time and time again. And in Daniel's situation, he was gifted for it. He didn't lose his life, but instead an entire kingdom was was commanded to tremble in fear before his God. When we look at our own lives and we see how our faithfulness should, be, should impact our lives and the lives of others, there should be fruit that comes from that. Whether it's you find yourself changing your habits or you find yourself changing the people you're hanging around or you see the people you're with start to change and grow into people that you're becoming because of your time that you're spending with God. There should be visible changes that occur because of your faithfulness to God. Um, And today, before, as I close, I just want to ask one question. When your life is coming to an end and it's time for you to either go to heaven or hell, uh, do you want the question, do you want somebody to look at your life and say, I came to know God because of your faithfulness to God? And, to, and that they came to the conclusion that your God is the living God. 
enduring forever, whose kingdom shall never be destroyed, and whose dominion shall be to the end. And the one who delivers and rescues, who works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth, who has saved you from the power of your sin. Do you want people to look at your faithfulness to God and, see, and ha- make a change in their own life? Is that what you want? I hope it is, and I pray that that's what you want, because that's what I want too. Well, that's all we have for tonight. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And I really hope to see you guys this weekend on Sunday at 1045 over on the lawn. Uh, We'll be just hanging out and listening to the Word. So I hope to see you there. Have a nice night.